Welcome back to Inside Number 23, my little part of the interwebs where I talk about knitting and sewing and just generally living the craftiest life possible. My name is Katie and you can find me pretty much everywhere on social media as Miss Lavelli, although I'm most active on Instagram. And it's just really lovely to be back with you with another episode of Inside Number 23. I hope you've all had a good week since I spoke to you last. Um, it's a little bit later in the week than I usually upload this podcast and the reason behind that is that I uploaded an additional video on this channel this week which was a little baby themed video um, involving my lovely husband Emrys where we talk about um, our experiences in pregnancy so far because yes I am currently pregnant as I let you know a little, little bit ago um, and we had loads of fun making that video it's always really nice to film with Emrys um, but yeah just to kind of get that up I decided to pop this video a little bit later into the weekly schedule so um, so yeah I hope you enjoyed that video like I said I'm gonna try and separate a lot of the kind of more I suppose factual stuff to do with um, our pregnancy and the baby and into separate videos so for those who aren't so interested in baby you don't have to have it throughout the podcast but I would like to say thank you so much to everyone who reached out after my episode last week basically saying that you have no problem with me talking about anything that I want to on my podcast and that the content is entirely up to me because that was a lovely thing to hear and it's always really encouraging to know that you guys will stick around um, some of you being as specific as saying you would stick around even if I just read the phone books <laughs> Thank you for that. I don't imagine I will be sitting here reading the phone book anytime soon, but it's incredibly sweet of you to say that. We've named that little series um, Baby Making, which made me laugh a lot when I came up with that. But yes, I will create a separate playlist of kind of baby themed videos under baby making on this channel. So if you ever want to check those out, they will have a playlist of their own. Um, show notes for the podcast can be found just down below in the little drop down doobly-doo just down here uh, in case you want any information about what I talk about on the episode and the best way to get hold of me is to email me. I have an email address for the podcast, it's katie at insidenumber23.com so feel free to drop me an email if you have any queries or questions or anything regarding the podcast, I'd love to hear from you. It is still very warm here in the UK, <laughs> um, I know everyone's sick of hearing about the weather but I'm British and it's what we do, we talk about the weather. It has been quite warm so my knitting mojo has dipped slightly over the past week. Um, I haven't been working on a huge variety of projects. I have been getting some stuff done and I do also have some fun projects in the works that I want to talk about this week. Um, but yeah it has been really really warm and um, Gosh, I wish we had air conditioning. A couple of you suggested that I invest in some air conditioning last week when I was talking about the temperature. And believe me, although that would be an absolute joy and a treat, really there's no point here in the UK to invest in, in an air conditioning unit of any kind because our weather is so varied um, that we will have hot weather for a little bit and then it will be freezing again and raining. And um, so yeah, right now, not really an option. So we'll just have to suffer and have a fan for now. But yeah, enough talking about the weather because it's dull and boring. So I'm gonna crack on um, and start with what I'm wearing. Uh, this is quite a funny one. Um, I have worn this finished object um, in an episode I think two weeks ago and a lot of you commented that my um, the way that I behaved when I was wearing this was how you kind of had a very good idea that I was pregnant at the time because I didn't stand up to show you the detailing on the bottom and yeah this is my finished Tegna sweater. I absolutely love this sweater. It's um, Tegna by Caitlin Hunter of Boil and Knitworks. I knit this out of Twisted Finch yarn and I wear it a lot. It's a really really nice thing to be able to wear when it's warm outside because it's so light and airy and gorgeous and 
I really do think that this pattern is super appropriate to those who are with baby because um, it is very kind of boxy and um, loose around the midriff. So I'm just gonna pop up so that you can kind of see how it looks on, um, on the pregnant body. So as you can see here, it's actually really quite flattering over baby bump uh, because the lace just kind of sits and looks quite pretty. I'm really happy with how it looks and it actually makes me feel not as big as I actually am. Um, and it's quite flattering on the shape. But also, there's so much space in here that I don't feel hot when I wear it. So, so I can wear this kind of whilst I'm commuting, whilst I'm at work. It's great because I tend to commute very early in the mornings in order to avoid um, rush hour because I don't really like being around loads and loads of people, particularly when it's hot, particularly when I'm pregnant. So it's great because it does tend to be a little bit cooler in the mornings and I can just wear this and feel a little bit more covered. But when it gets a little bit hotter, I don't feel as though I'm drowning in a knit garment. I would say I would probably not wear this on days where it's kind of in the 30s because nobody wants to have wool against their skin when it's that warm. But kind of the mid 20s, low 20s, I can wear this quite comfortably. And for anybody who's looking for a pregnancy friendly knit project, this is great. Um, and I love mine. And yeah. That is what I'm currently wearing. I am pairing it with another me-made object, which is the skirt that I'm wearing, but I'm gonna get a little bit more detailed. I'm going to get into that in more detail later in the episode, because it's a new finished object. And so I'll talk about that specifically a little bit later. But yes, Tegna is amazing. I could definitely see myself knitting another. And the, the lovely thing about it is, is that it just, I've talked about previously about how much of an amazing knit it was and how much I enjoyed it, but wearing it makes me feel myself, which, because my body is obviously going through crazy changes at the moment, I don't always feel entirely myself in my own body. So having something that gives me so much confidence when I wear it is a really lovely thing. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing this week. Moving on to knitting projects, um, I have some finished objects to share with you this week. And yes, you heard me rightly, I said finished objects, because I may not have done a huge amount of knitting this week, but the type of things that I've been knitting don't actually require a huge amount of time before they are finished. Um, and so I have one project to share with you that is finished, that I've actually um, shared with you last week. It's a kind of ongoing project, and one that I literally finished and started on one day this week. It took me less than a day to start, finish, block everything this project, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, I'm really, really happy with this first finished object that I have to share with you, um, because I genuinely feel like it's the cutest project that I have ever worked on ever in my life and I'm so happy with it and um it is this little cardigan oh my goodness I can't get over how adorable this is it's really just everything that I would want in in a project and more so this pattern which I started last week so bear in mind how quickly that got finished. Um, this is the Double Dutch Child's Cardigan by Knitting Expat Designs, also known as Mina Philip, my lovely friend Mina, who also podcasts over at the Knitting Expat podcast. And this is the most adorable little child's cardigan. It is just the cutest thing. It has this cabling pattern that runs down the front on either side of the button band. It has this really cute shawl collar. And on the back, it also has a larger cabled motif that goes down to the bottom with ribbing around the, the bottom edge and on the cuffs. And you can probably tell by the way that I'm raving about it, but. I am obsessed with this. I think it's the cutest thing ever. Oh my goodness. So I know that Mina is currently developing another version of this pattern for actual grown up human people. And that excites me even more because when I was working on this and finishing it up, all I could think was, oh my goodness, this would look so cute as a grown up kind of thing as well. But I did the smallest size, which I think might be 
three to six months or not to six months I'm not sure it's quite a large spectrum I'll find out and just pop down below exactly what the size spectrum is and I knit this out of gifted yarn from hell candy which this colorway this kind of gorgeous speckled amazingness is called omg dog and it's so sweet it's basically kind of pug colors which is great because we're a a pug household, as you'll know if you've watched um, for a while. My lovely pug puppy Rolly is the light of my life. And so to have this cardigan is, is just gorgeous. I also attached some buttons on the front. These are just brown buttons that I had in stash. And I think they look amazing. I'm so happy with how this turned out. Everything about it just thrills me. And I think that little, little baby is gonna look incredibly cute in this I mean it's it's just everything I'm also in love with how well it's blocked out it smells amazing because I use some kind of um, handmade wool wash that was sent to me and it's just all ready it's all ready a little, little mini Matthews to wear when they get here obviously it will be probably a little while before they'll fit into it because it's a little bit larger than some of the other projects that I've worked on but it's still knitted up incredibly quickly and I'm so happy with it um, all my bias aside, because Mina is a really dear friend of mine, she's a wonderful, wonderful person and I just adore her anyway, her patterns really are wonderful and I couldn't recommend them more highly. So if you have a small person in your life, I think this cardigan is just, it's, it's, it should be up there on your to knit list. Just because a lot of baby garments I found are very basic and don't really have any interest and I like things that have a bit more of a challenge. So this kind of project with a little bit of cabling and everything going on, it just added that extra little thrill to working on it, which I think is probably why I ended up finishing it as quickly as I did, because I found it an incredibly enjoyable project to work on. And I could see that it was going to be a very, very cute garment when it was done. So yes, first finished object of the week, my little baby cardigan and I'm very, very happy with it. So when I was finishing up this cardigan project um, and I was sewing on the buttons and it was all looking really lovely, I, I finished it up and then I realized that I didn't have anything else cast on in the near vicinity of me. And because I'm getting rounder, shall we say, I really just didn't want to have to walk upstairs and find another project and go and get it and or cast on something else with, you know, pick yarn. I was just, it was too warm. I was not in the mood. And I remembered that I had purchased another project that also used DK weight yarn and I thought it would be incredibly cute to use the same colorway that I had used for the baby cardigan for this other project and that was the beloved hat which is a tin can knits pattern and as with all tin can knits it's wonderful because it sizes from newborn all the way up to kind of grown up size which is lovely and I know that this is a really popular little hat pattern and this is the project that I cast on and cast off and blocked all on the same day and it is this little hat with the little tassels how cute is this hat it's all flat because it's been blocked out and lovely but it has a little kind of peaked top on it really cute garter detailing around the edge and then these little tassels on either side this was an incredibly satisfying project um, I didn't gauge swatch for it or anything. I literally just cast on the smallest size. It's technically a newborn size, but I think my gauge was a little bit looser. So I think it's come up slightly bigger. Although I know that babies do tend to have big heads when they're born. Not looking forward to that very much, but um, <laughs> whenever it fits them, it will be absolutely gorgeous. And if it takes a little while for it to fit, Obviously the cardigan that it's matched to is slightly bigger anyway. So I loved this project. I'm a big fan of Tin Can Knits. This is the second project of theirs that I have finished for Little Mini Matthews. Um, the first being the Flax Light Sweater that I finished. This pattern is just so intuitive and so quick and easy and it's produced such a lovely finished object that I could see myself knitting a good more good few more of these in different colours but I just love that it matches the little cardigan I'm very I'm very into matchy matchy be it um 
matchy outfits for the baby, matchy mummy baby type of things as you probably gather. But this was really, really fun. And again, I recommend it incredibly highly. I know that the majority of you, this is gonna be all old hat in terms of, guess what, tin can knits is great for baby knits, but being a first time mum, I've never really knit children's garments before. So it's a real joy kind of discovering just how good those garments are. And then thinking, actually, do you know what? I could totally knit one of those in the larger sizes for myself. So, so yeah, two finished objects this week, both for baby, um, but I'm really happy with them. I think they're adorable and it's nice to have another another two things to add to to little little baby's wardrobe so yay in terms of other things that i have been working on in terms of knitting that's pretty much all the actual knitting that i've got done this week but it doesn't mean to say that there hasn't been other things kind of going on behind the scenes something that i've talked about quite a lot recently is wanting to use my stash yarn to um, get things out of hibernation, to frog things back if I don't want them, to finish things if they are long-term works in progress and that type of thing. So another thing that I actually ended up doing this week which was very very satisfying was I had frogged a lot of yarn back from a cardigan project that I've been working on quite a lot last year using this beautiful yarn. This yarn is by Travel Knitter. It is absolutely glorious. I actually bought this at Edinburgh Yarn Festival, not this year gone, but the year before. It's in the English Damson colourway, which is this beautiful kind of deep purpley burgundy, and it's so gorgeous. It's also on her Tamari, no, can't speak, Tanami four ply base, which is 50% baby camel and 50% silk. And oh, I love it, it's so soft and yummy and glorious. And I had knit a lot of this into a cardigan project, um, but I just wasn't feeling it. And so I'd frogged it back a fair while ago, but I just left the yarn in lots of balls which isn't great for, for ripped back yarn because obviously when you frog a project, what tends to happen is you get the spaghetti yarn, you know, like noodle noodle yarn, or it looks like like doll hair, like rag doll hair, where it's all just blah, 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 all the way through. So what I like to do with my yarn when I frog it back is that I'll ball it originally, once I've kind of ripped it just to keep it neat, make sure it doesn't tangle. But then what I'll do is I'll use my swift, to kind of re-skein it very basically just to make lots of skeins of yarn so I'm kind of putting it back into an open skein not a twisted up skein and I then give the yarn a little bath I let it dry which drops out all of the kinks in it and I will then either if I'm going to knit with it right away I'll wind it back up into cakes um, or I'll just kind of twist up those skeins and put them back into stash for storage but because this yarn has been kind of sitting around for such a long time, I am envisioning that I will be casting on a new project with it soon now that it's all been kind of washed and it's ready to go. And the project that I want to use it for is um, one that I have wanted to cast on for a very long time. <laughs> is Breathing Space by, um, by Vera Valmaki, and it's a beautiful sweater project. Um, you probably all have seen this sweater before. It's, it's, done, it's done the rounds on Instagram, on Ravelry. It feels like maybe a year or so ago, everybody was knitting this project. I, as always, tend to come late to the party, to trends and things like that, but I've wanted to cast on a breathing space since the um, Edinburgh Yarn Festival where I bought this yarn, actually, because I saw so many gorgeous ladies sporting that sweater, and I thought, I really do need one of these in my life. I think that would be wonderful. Also, one of the other reasons that it's appealing to me now is because of the shape of it. It's quite fitted around the bust line, but then it does have quite a lot of ease around the waist and the hips. Um, and obviously, because of the baby bump I'm currently sporting, and after the baby bump, the squidgy area that I will most likely be sporting, I do think that this will be a really nice project. Um, kind of similar to Tegna in terms of helping me still feel like I am expressing myself by wearing something that I will wear um, regardless of whether I'm pregnant or not um, but it will be quite forgiving around baby bump and then post baby bump body 
Um, so yeah, I think a lot of the projects that I that I will be gearing towards will be things that I know that I really, really want to wear, but also that are appropriate for kind of baby making shape, as it were. Um, yeah. <laughs> But I'm very, very excited to um, to cast on again with this yarn because I did find the cardigan that I was working on quite frustrating. Um, the pattern and I just didn't really click. But working with this yarn is what kept me working on it for so long because I absolutely love it. Um, I've actually bought another two skeins of Travel Knitter, the same base but a different colour, to be the contrasting stripes. Um, and it's Puddled Iron, which is this beautiful kind of grey-blue colour. Isn't that just divine? Travel Knitter does these incredible jewel tones and I love them so much. And I just think that these two colours together, ah, oh my goodness, that makes me so happy. So yeah, that will be um, on the needles hopefully soon. I might be able to swatch for that this evening um, because I want to make sure that it fits perfectly. This yarn has had, it's had a journey. <laughs> so I want to make sure that I get it right this time and make something that I know that I'm going to love. Those colours make me so happy. And yeah, I'm very, very excited at the idea of casting that on. Obviously, I'm still working on my soiree sweater, but I didn't put more than a few rows onto that this week. Um, and the mohair really is starting to irritate my skin in the heat, which is another reason why um, a super, super soft um, kind of baby camel and silk blend would be a nice thing to, to use during, during this hot weather, as opposed to lots of mohair. But soiree will be finished. I'm determined that I will finish it. Um, but yeah, it hasn't had much work done on it this week, unfortunately. <sighs> Such is life. But yes, there's a lot of positive stuff um, going around my head in terms of my mojo when it comes to knitting. So even though I don't feel like I've got a massive amount done, although two finished objects for baby, I feel like it's, yeah, we can give ourselves a pat on the back for that. Um, I do still feel like the juices are flowing and um, I'm excited about projects and that's the most important thing, isn't it? So moving on to what I have been sewing this week. And as I kind of was talking about in what I'm wearing, I am wearing another me made object this week, which is a skirt that I've made. But before I talk about that, I wanted to talk about just just briefly about what it's been like um, dealing with a very actively changing body and how that has impacted my making. And in particular, I would say my sewing. Now, I don't necessarily feel the same way about sewing as I do about knitting projects because, like I said, I've been, I've been gravitating towards this kind of shape of knitting project, um, which is something that's a little bit more boxy, a little bit more loose. There's always things that I can knit, socks, shawls, hats, mittens, that won't be affected by the fact that my body is changing as a pregnant person. But when it comes to sewing, a lot of the garments that I gravitate towards are a lot more impacted by having a baby bump, which has basically meant that my sewing mojo has been not great um, <laughs> since I found out that I was pregnant, mostly because a lot of the projects that I had been really excited to start were things that were a lot more fitted around the waist, um, that I knew um, would probably not fit me for very long if I were to finish them straight away because my body was actively growing and changing at that time. And also, I have no idea what my body is going to do post-pregnancy and so I don't want to put that additional pressure on myself to try and squeeze myself back into a me-made garment just because I've put a lot of time and energy into it, if that kind of makes sense. And that has also been combined with the fact that I was a little bit apprehensive about sewing maternity clothes <laughs> um, because I, if I'm, if I'm perfectly honest, I'm not sure whether I'll ever be pregnant for a second time um, after we have this baby. Um, I'm very much not kind of making any specific plans about that because this is our first baby and who knows how we'll, how we'll take being parents or whether we'll be happy with just one baby or whether we'll want loads more babies in the future. But I didn't want to kind of assume that I would be getting pregnant again and again after this little baby because you never know what's going to happen in the future. 
So the idea of sewing garments that are specifically maternity, pregnancy wear, again, was kind of jarring with me a little bit because I was thinking, well, do I really want to spend all that time and energy making something that's only going to fit me for at the most maybe six months or so, maybe six months, maybe three months, maybe four months. And I wrestled with that for quite a long time. I thought, I'll make garments that fit a body, whether it is pregnant or not. So things that are slightly more shapeless, like I said, kind of fitted around the bust line and then quite free on the bottom. And I'll just pair them with things that I know that I'll be able to wear like leggings and maybe I'll, I'll go to a shop and buy a couple of specific maternity wear items like some maternity jeans and that type of thing and everything will be fine. But that mentality didn't really work out because I started to feel more and more uncomfortable in clothes that are not kind of pregnancy friendly. Even things that were looser were kind of making me feel very restricted and in the heat that we've been having as well, let's let's always talk about the weather, um, it just makes everything that's kind of on your skin all the more uncomfortable to wear. So I decided long story short, to actually invest a little bit of time and effort into um, finding some specific maternity wear patterns and just giving, giving them a go and seeing how I get on, seeing how I feel. And oh my goodness, I have to say, this skirt that I have finished, I am a little bit obsessed with it and I'm so happy that I decided to actually take the time to make myself this skirt because I am living in it at the moment and I couldn't be happier or more comfortable, which is, you know, the most important thing, I guess, when it comes to being large and pregnant and in heat. In the heat. <laughs> wow, that was a bit of a slip. But anyway, <laughs> the pattern that I used for this skirt is one by um, Megan Nielsen. She is an indie pattern designer, and she's really, really great. She is one of the first indie pattern designers who actually designed um, maternity wear, because I believe that she became pregnant when she first started developing her own patterns, and so it just made sense for her to create maternity wear patterns as well as regular wear, because maternity patterns are still a bit of a rarity in the indie pattern world. I think that as pattern designers and developers, some of them start having children of their own. They design maternity patterns, but it's only, I think, within the last few years that there's been more patterns out there, and there's still not a huge amount of them. But yes, very, very happily, Megan Nielsen has this awesome pattern, which is called the Erin Skirt. It is a kind of wiggle skirt. It's very nicely fitted, and it comes in multiple different lengths. So you can do it as a knee length skirt, you can do it as kind of a midi length skirt. You can also choose to do it with or without a flounce around the bottom. So I opted for the knee length skirt with a flounce because who doesn't like a flounce? <laughs> and I actually made this out of some light grey Ponte Duroma fabric that I've had in stash for a really long time. So that's kind of a medium weight jersey, it's quite heavy and it also only has two way stretch so it just stretches in one direction rather than being like jersey that stretches in both directions which is great because it is quite a fitted um, garment which basically means that um, it holds its shape really well because it's slightly heavier weight than like I said t-shirt fabric or something like that. Um, this pattern is great for a number of different reasons. Uh, the first reason is that it is the simplest thing to put together. You can sew this up in a matter of hours once you've cut up your fabric. It is so easy to do. It literally has three pattern pieces if you want to use a flounce. If you just want a regular stretchy skirt, there are two pattern pieces. So for someone who, when you're making this skirt, you may be heavily pregnant and just not be bothered about cutting out lots of pieces and want something that's quick and easy and simple and also doesn't require a huge amount of brain work because you're tired and you're not really feeling your best. It is brilliant because two pattern pieces if you just want to make the simple skirt plus an extra one if you want to make a flounce. It's it's ju just jobs are good and it's brilliant. I also find that it's incredibly comfortable to wear because of how high it comes up. It comes up right underneath the bust line which basically means that you um, have your entire bump and your hips and your kind of lower legs 
all covered in one soft, smooth piece of fabric. It's almost like the equivalent of wearing a sleeping bag all day, but one that's really comfy and not too hot, because obviously it's not quilted like a big sleeping bag. I do feel a little bit like a fish in it because it has this flounce, but in the best possible way. And it's been a massive confidence boost for me to have something that I feel fits me really well, that looks good on my body, that I made myself because I always feel better when I'm wearing a me made garment, but one that I sewed this entire skirt project on my lunch break at work. So it took me less than an hour to sew this all together. And that to me is probably the biggest benefit of it because you don't wanna be spending ages when you're um when you're a little bit pregnant <laughs> but also it kind of makes me go yeah i can totally sew this and it's not a problem because it doesn't use a huge amount of yardage of fabric for one it also um doesn't take a huge amount of time so i don't feel like i'm spending hours and hours and hours of my time on a project that's only going to last me for a little bit and that also is a big, big benefit because I'm always worried about spending time on something that I won't wear for the long term. So yes, lots and lots of big thumbs up for the Erin skirt pattern. Um, it's currently only available as a PDF file, which I didn't mind because um, I don't have a problem with sticking together PDFs. Um, that's not something that really bothers me all that much. And also, if I thought that I was going to be making hundreds of them, if it was something I was going to wear for years, then I'd be a bit miffed that it wasn't a paper pattern. But again, it's only something that I'm going to wear when I'm pregnant. So yay. I will definitely be making another version of this in black. Um, I'm not entirely sure if I will do it basic or with the ruffle. I'll probably do it with the ruffle because I'm a ruffle fan, the little flounce around the bottom and I do like things to have a little bit of intrigue, a little bit of a bit of fun, but I can't recommend it more highly. If you are pregnant or you want to sew for someone who is expecting, it's a really, really great project. Super easy, super simple and really nice and comfortable to wear, so yay. The other bit of sewing that I wanted to talk about this week is actually a project that I am planning on um, as opposed to something that is currently in progress. So kind of similar to knitting, I guess. I've been like, here's a finished object and here's what I'm thinking about doing. Same for sewing, basically. Um, I am very, very keen to make clothes at the moment that, like I said, still have longevity to them. So even though my Erin skirt is a maternity skirt, fully a pregnancy skirt designed to, for you to have a big belly when you wear it, um, there are certain projects that I have been kind of thinking about doing, which are things that I could wear during pregnancy, kind of the first few months post-pregnancy, you know, taking into account that my body is still going to be settling down for quite some time. And also if I'm going to be thinking about breastfeeding, incorporating that. So many more things that you need to think about with clothes when you're dealing with, with babies and pregnancy, like pff, mind blown. Um, and But then also something that I'll probably want to wear even after that, because I don't want to make clothes that don't last. That's just the way that I am. That's just the way my mental space is right now. And I actually found a really amazing post on the um, indie pattern designer, um, her website, Pauline Alice. And I really like Pauline Alice's um, patterns. If you haven't seen them before, she has a really lovely vintage aesthetic, um, in particular kind of a 50s flair, which if you know me from the past, you know that I have a real love for kind of 40s and 50s fashion. So that kind of really appealed to me anyway. But when I started looking into um, her blog, she doesn't, I believe, at the moment have any specific um, maternity patterns. But she has a whole post on her website about buying her current patterns and kind of hacking them to turn them into things that would be appropriate for someone who is pregnant. And I think that that's great because it basically means that I can buy one of her patterns, kind of hack it about for something that's pregnancy friendly, but I'll still have her pattern um, for when my body kind of goes back a little bit more kind of regular, non-pregnancy sized um, later on. So it gives me multiple options, which I really, really like. 
Plus I enjoy a bit of a pattern hack, it makes me feel like I've, um, I've achieved something, I guess. So one of the patterns on there, she has a whole list of how you can um, adapt all of her different patterns for um, a pregnant body. But one that I really, really loved the look of was the cami dress. Now I love a shirt waist dress. There is no secret behind that. Um, the amount of versions of the Blue A dress by Dear and Doe that I have made in the past will probably give you a very good indication to the fact that I am obsessed with a shirt waist, shirt waist dress. And so I knew that if I made one of these that would be pregnancy appropriate and also, fingers crossed, kind of post-pregnancy appropriate, it would be something that I would wear anyway and also something that would make me feel more like myself in pregnancy which is always a really really good thing um and basically the way that the cami dress is designed i'm going to put an image of it on the screen somewhere so you'll get an idea of what i'm talking about the original design is fitted on the waist it has buttons down the front of the bodice but then it has a side zip um up the side of the dress surprisingly, a side zip in the side. Um, and you can do it with either very short sleeves or slightly longer sleeves with little kind of tucked up cuffs, which are adorable. Now the pattern hack, which is suggested on, the, on her blog, um, I will link it down below in case you are interested. But the idea is to lift the waistline of the dress. So to make it more of an empire line dress um, with a little bit of gathering underneath the bust um, and then just adding the skirt directly into that lifted waistline. But the other fun thing is to add um, buttons down the entirety of the front of the dress. So rather than the buttons just going down the front of the bodice, they would then go down the entirety of the skirt as well. Um, and that's just more for convenience sake, because when you're a bit bigger and you're trying to get in and out of clothes, having to kind of manoeuvre something over your head and wiggle something down and side zips, it's not that much fun. Just kind of stepping into something and button, <laughs> buttoning it up down the bottom um, is a lot easier. So I, again, appreciated that she took that into account when she kind of um, looked at this slight pattern hack for maternity wear. So I'm thinking that this would actually be a really, really cute shape whether or not I was pregnant, because obviously with something that's empire line, so empire line, I never like to assume that people know everything that I'm talking about, just means that it comes underneath the bust. So essentially your waistline, instead of being kind of here around the waist, would sit just below the bust. So it would still be relatively fitted around the bust line, but instead of being then fitted down to the waist, which for me would be about here-ish, it would finish just here. So that's where the skirt would sit, um, which is still a very pretty shape. And it's something that I would wear in my regular day-to-day -day life, but it's obviously incredibly friendly for a baby bump. And I just think that this is a really, really lovely project. I think it will make me feel like I've achieved something by hacking this pattern a little bit. And also it gives me the option to do something that I love with a shirt-waisted dress, which is to do a contrasting collar and put something a little bit special on it. I'm not entirely sure what I want to put on the collar of this dress yet, but I, I think it might be something embroidered, which makes me really, really happy, because um, you may or may not remember, in the past couple of episodes, I've talked about the fact that I've really enjoyed kind of crafting small projects with my hands, lots of hand stitching, um, working on cross stitch projects and stuff like that. So I think that that would be a really lovely treat um, to do. So I'm going to start off by making one version of this dress. Um, but depending on how we get on, I might make a couple because, like I said, shirt waist dresses, dresses, goodness, shirt waist dresses <laughs> make me really, really happy. And it does feel like a bit more of my signature style moving into pregnancy and post-pregnancy, which is, which is good. I think it will make me feel confident and happy. And I also have some really, really lovely fabric, which I have all picked out for, for this project. Now you may recognise this fabric um, as something that I actually had planned for a different pattern. 
I have wanted for a really long time to make the Rosa dress. Now the Rosa dress is a Tilly and the Buttons pattern. I do currently work for Tilly and the Buttons and I'm a huge fan. I have been since before I was working for her but I'm a huge fan of her patterns. I love them and I've wanted to make the Rosa dress and one of the things that made me really sad um, when I was starting to think about um, sewing projects since finding out that we were expecting is that the rosa dress just wouldn't fit because, <laughs> because of my being pregnant and I had this fabric picked out and I'd been really excited about it so I was feeling a bit about that but then I realised that I could actually use this fabric for the cami dress and it would be a very similar style um, and then I can always come back to the rosa dress at a later date so that made me very happy but this is a lovely chambray fabric in this gorgeous kind of navy blue, denim blue, and it's really light and incredibly breathable. So if the hot weather continues, which we have been told that it will, I've got those like random hiccups again that I had last week, because that's the only hiccup that I've had. I just get one hiccup and apologies for the lone hiccup that I just had, but this, um, Yes, if the hot weather does continue, this will be really, really lovely because it's very breathable and light um, and it's all kind of natural fibres, natural cotton chambray. So it'll just feel really kind of airy and pretty, but also I'll be able to wear it into autumn because I can pair it with tights and boots and a little cardigan and I just think it will be so cute. I'm thinking that I might use um, kind of white pearlescent buttons down the front to go with the contrasting white collar that I want to put onto it as well and if you can't tell it's just really exciting to me the idea of making a dress that yes is convenient for pregnancy and yes will be great for a baby bump but it's also something that I'm just really excited about and I just want to wear it regardless of like convenience for my body and that type of thing so I'm really really excited with that I do have all of the pattern pieces ready to go um I've started to tweak them a little bit so fingers crossed I will be getting this cut out at the very least in the next week or so so I'll have a little bit more progress to share with you um next week but yeah, I think it's just, it's given me a little bit of um, a boost. Finishing this skirt that I'm wearing and also planning this project is making me feel more confident about sewing for a changing body, which is quite intimidating if I'm perfectly honest. And it's also just bringing me a lot of joy and a lot of positivity, which is exactly what I want at this point in my life. So, yay! Well guys, that is pretty much everything from what I have been working on this week. And um, thank you so much for tuning in to see what I have been working on. It has been really, really, really lovely to share all of my crafty bits and pieces with you again this week. And I'm just, I'm just really happy and thankful for the fact that you've stuck with me and your love and support as always. You are the best audience that a podcaster could ask for. So thank you so 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 much for that and um and yeah i'm just happy to be in a position where i'm back with you on a weekly basis and we're keeping things up and everything's looking really good and big thumbs up for everything but i'm gonna leave it there for this week i hope you all have a week that's filled with things that bring you joy be that crafty things or food or spending time with people you love or whatever just brings you joy um, and makes your heart happy. Um, from me to you, I'm sending you so much love and I will see you again for another podcast really, really soon. Bye!